بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد In the name of Allah, the Medificent, the Merciful I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I send peace and blessings to all of the Prophets, to Moses, to Jesus and especially to our beloved Prophet Muhammad his family and his companions forever I begin with the greeting words of the righteous Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Ethiopia Ard al-Habasha The land of Abyssinia The land of great kings The land of mystery, spirituality The land of ancient history As a young African American With West Indian parentage I always wondered about Ethiopia This land for my family and for those African Americans living in the West always had a type of magic to it, a type of mystery. It was a land where African people were proud, where early civilization developed. Some say that even the first man walked this land. But in my quest, I realized that Ethiopia was more than just a land of history. It was a land of high spirituality. It is said that the lost Ark of the Covenant lies in this land. It is also said that great Christian rulers and kings walk this land and maintain the teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him. As a Muslim, I came to understand that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when living in Mecca and when he found that he was persecuted and his followers needed help, he told them, if you go out to the land of Habasha, to Abyssinia, there you will find a king who oppresses nobody. It is a land of truth. Ya Ardun Sidq. How did he know that it was a land of truth? Why did he send his followers into Africa before he sent them to Palestine? Before he sent them to Persia? Even to Yemen? Why? Join me on our search for the history of this beautiful land and also for the true story of Najashi, the great Negus, the king of Aksum, and also light upon what happened to the Sahaba, to their families in this historic, mystical land. Join me in this journey of a lifetime as I leave you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. My journey starts in the relatively young city of Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia. It was founded in 1887 by the Emperor Menelik and has grown to a population of just over 3 million. To my astonishment, I found out that a large percentage of the people of Addis Ababa are Muslim. In fact, 40% of Ethiopia is Muslim. It may seem hard to imagine that in a country that has recently turned away from communism, Islam has never ceased to grow. In fact, Islam is growing at an unprecedented rate. Minarets of mosques dominate the old town and the call to prayer reverberates around the city. Addis Ababa is a city on the move. The hustle and bustle of daily life continues unabated. Down every street and around every corner, Muslims go about their chores. Whether it's to the mosque, or shopping, it became quite apparent that Islam is here to stay.
Because I came on a quest to find the role of Islam in Ethiopia today, I knew that one of the best places to converse with Muslims was at the mosque. And so I set off to the biggest mosque in Addis Ababa known as Masjid al-Imam Hassan ibn Abi Talib. Here I met an elder of the city, Sheikh Tamil al-Sharif, a son of one of Addis Ababa's most beloved and well-known shuyukh. As Sheikh Tamil's name also indicates a sharif he is a noble one, a descendant of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I myself belong to the Ahlul Bayt salam. We Ahlul Bayt, our grand grandfathers, has came to Ethiopia from Arab Venezuela, passing the Red Cross, uh, the Red Sea, to the Somali border and they penetrated to deep into Harar. The cause of their immigrating to Harar or coming to Harar to Africa is to call for Islam, to propagate Islam and teach the people of that area Islamic principle. It is known and worth mentioning that the Ahlul Bayt in all the way from their grandfather Muhammad and until the last day they are basically devoted for Islam. Wherever they go they preach for Islam and they work for Islam. They give guidance and proper teaching to all Muslims and approach non-Muslims also to accept Islam. I found out that Sheikh Campbell's family comes from the legendary city of Hara, situated in the east of Ethiopia. He also told me that Hara was one of the main centers of Islamic learning for over 800 years. I had to find out more of this ancient city and arrange with Sheikh Kamil to journey there. Before my journey, I had the privilege to meet with some of the elders of Hara. They have established a special trust in the Haredi National League in order to preserve the history and culture of the city. Amazingly, the language we all felt comfortable speaking was Arabic. I was amazed just listening to these men talk about Haram. More and more, I wanted to get to the city and see it for myself. What got my interest going even more were the books that were brought along for me to go through. Here 